the sirens will be going off any second now. You know, the water in the houses and cats, it was halfway up the windows, it was, it was so high. Welcome back to the channel and to a bit of a different video today because we're going to be looking at flooding specifically in the towns of Todmorden, Hebden Bridge and Mythamroyd, the colder valley where I live. Now I'm 30 and I can remember in my life maybe five or six really bad floods and I'm talking really bad floods, washing the town out. So today we're going to go explore, we're going to look at the the landscape, find out some reasons why it floods, hopefully speak to some business owners who were affected, maybe some homeowners. And also, there was a, a house for sale that I saw. It's on for 30 grand, and it's in a spot which gets flooded, maybe the worst of the whole valley. So we're gonna go have a look at that as well, because I think that the last flood was 2020, it's 2023 now, so that house is still in a really bad way from the flood, so we're gonna go have a look at that. So it should be interesting. And one, well, the main reason really why it floods so much, and it's here right in front of me, just look at this. So we are on the valley floor at the moment. And right there, you've got the canal, the massive canal. This is right on the valley floor, hills going up that way. So you've got a big canal here, directly next to a big river, the River Calder, which runs all the way through the Calder Valley and just next to it there, the main road, and then all around this is just steep hills going up. At the top of all these hills as well, at the top of the valleys, there are reservoirs and other huge bodies of water, all with different rivers that are coming down, connecting to the river, which also connects to the canal at points. So you can just imagine that when it does start raining, all that water floods down, it hits these two bodies of waters here, which turn into one big river, it spreads out onto the road and it just washes through the whole valley. It's crazy. It's so scary when it happens, but essentially that's what this valley is. It's a drainage basin. And with a lot of urbanization happening along the main road, along the canal, along the river, that's where everything operates. That's the stuff that is in the firing line of the water when it comes. So let's go explore. Let's go into the towns and see what we can find. So where the, the, the gym, um, funnily enough, it's literally next to the canal, so we can see the canal on one side, and then to the left-hand side, we've got the river. So we had it basically coming over from both sides. And I knew the, that the place had been flooded in the past, so it was basically just sort of waiting for Mother Nature to either do, do a thing or not. I found out about 5 a.m. in the morning that the water was starting to come through. The protection that we had that actually burst through the pressure of the water, literally, that's when it just let loose. The biggest issue is all the electrical equipment that just got absolutely destroyed. What was just incredible, amazing was the community. Like we had people that I've never met before coming in, helping me out for hours on end. We had this guy who was 82 years old and he helped us out for 10 hours. And I didn't know any of these people. So thankful, it was just amazing. We did get some grants, which was helpful to basically you know, rebuild. We had to get a whole new floor in because the health and safety weren't happy with it for obvious reasons. We then got another grant to put in some more preventative measures to make sure if and probably when it happens again, uh, it shouldn't happen as badly. But having a gym in the centre of the valley, in a place that floods, um, and you just have to grit your, grit your teeth and bear it and see what happens. That house that I just showed you there was my grandma's house when she was moving into a home when one of the floods happened. I think it was the 2012 or maybe one before that. Anyway, that house was up for sale and I was briefly living there whilst it was selling and we had a buyer. Floods knocked about 40, 50 grand off the sale of that house. But there has been flood defences done, so we'll go have a look at them as well. And the house prices have rocketed back up. Right, so here we are in Hebden Bridge. Now, there's the canal, just there. But look at this here. This again shows why it floods so badly. So it's kind of hard to see, but down there, there's one river that comes in from there and then another river that comes down from there, all meeting here, just next to the canal. So essentially it's just a giant meeting point of all these different bodies of water 
And then alongside those main rivers as well, you've got smaller rivers that just flow into the town. Small little streams, which when the rain comes, they ain't small little streams anymore. And you also, you think that it's just the houses that are on the bottom of the floor that are at risk of flooding, but that's not the case. There were lots of floods. Mm. You know, there was runoff water from the hilltops. Like the house I lived in got flooded and that's about 300 meters above sea level where you think this is never going to flood here. Yeah. Because flooding is not just about river water coming up, it's runoff coming too quickly off the hill. So, you know, our house, we were like out of the house for months. Mm. And there we go, the cause of it all. It goes from being well nice round here to pissing it down in a second. So let's get over to Mythamroyd and view that house while it's raining. I'll show you around there um, and then hopefully the rain will go and we can explore some more. Right, welcome to Mythamroyd. And this here is part of the new flood defence system. All the money that got put into stopping the flooding happening and they rebuilt this entire bridge here. So yeah, this new bridge was built where they widened the river. They also changed the actual size of the bridge to let more water run through so there's no lag. What else did they do? They, they dredged all the canals. The canals always get full of shit. So they dredged all that out of them and they've got a floodplain and some more stuff will go look down. But yeah, this is Mythamroyd. And I know this river looks low now, but just compare it to that footage from 2015. I'll go show you some spots, different spots of what Mythamroyd looked like. Yeah, so right down there, it's one of them houses that I'm viewing, so you can imagine comparing it to that flood footage, it just got washed straight through. And here as well, just the centre of Mythamroyd where all of this was underwater, all of this. So about £30 million has been spent in the Calder Valley on flood prevention and other schemes so that when the rain starts falling and the rivers start rising, the towns are prepared and now it's just waiting and trusting that it all has worked. This main road, I went to school, high school, just up there. And I remember one, this must have been 2000 and what, seven, maybe 2008, there was a really bad flood when we were at school and we all had to go home. No buses running and I literally remember a kid swimming down this main road, just swimming. You all right, pal? Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, so this is the house right on the river's edge. So let's go in and have a look around, see what state it's in. So here we go, this is the downstairs area in the house. And as you can see, it is just stripped back to the very basics. Now this area downstairs next to the river will get completely flooded underwater. Now I don't know the positioning of this house, the water might have even reached upstairs, but the damage alone from having that much water in your house is just so detrimental. So I think that somebody just had enough of living here. You can see that there's all this building stuff here. So somebody at some point has tried to redo it, but then probably came another flood and just washed it all away, all that progress. There's the view of the river there. You can see that the water will just be covering that window when it comes past. And the damage it's done to these walls here, just look at that. Now the insurance as well, once your house has been flooded or your business and you try to get insurance again, it just goes astronomically high. So it makes people just get out. There's a pipe here leaking, still water coming into this house. So this house isn't damp, it's soaking wet and you can just feel that everywhere. Now coming upstairs, maybe the water didn't reach all the way up here, but having that much moisture in the water walls, in the floor, just everywhere. It just means that it's all completely stripped back and everything just feels sodden. It's actually really sad looking around this house and imagining when it was full of life, like picture your house, your house full of all your stuff, your memories, and then the floods come and just washes all of that away. And when that happens, imagine then the insurance goes up. You would just want to leave. It's hard to imagine again, this house full of life, full of people actually living there when it's in this state. You'd have to have a lot of money and trust and belief in the flood defences to try and make this a home again. And look at all these photos that are left here. This is strange. The floods took so much away but just left these little memories of the house once being lived in, families and pictures of babies and there was also a gas mask which I had no idea why that was there. Then coming into this upstairs bedroom here you can see that the walls are so damaged. Now I don't know about the roof though, obviously to me it looks bare, there seems to be some sort of membrane over the top but the wood 
bear looks all right, but someone let me know if they know about roofing. How bad is that? Obviously, the wall on the other side is terrible. The windows need replacing. But ultimately, what we're looking at with this place is a house that has had the ability to call itself a home removed. And its unfortunate placement right next to that river just means that it will take someone so brave to come in, to give it the love that it needs, to give it the attention, to once again have someone living in it. And even then, could you live in it safely knowing that the water right outside that window there one day might just come straight past and strip it all back again? It's really, really sad. But interestingly enough, I followed this house when it went to auction and someone clearly does believe that it can be lived in again because it went to to auction and sold for £73,000. Like I said, house prices have skyrocketed around here in the Calder Valley recently, but I do wonder a lot of times with these auctions, like all these bidders here, how many of them actually knew the positioning of this house and that it's in a bad flood zone. So what this place here, this furniture shop did, which is directly across the road from the little house that we've just viewed there, this place, after flooding loads, decided we're just going to rebuild it, but into the sky. So what they did was they lifted the entire shop up. Beneath it, they have put a car park. So if it does flood, this ground level is just concrete down here. And upstairs is all of the furniture and products that will avoid getting wet if another flood does come. So if you've got millions to spend, you can avoid being flooded. That's the moral of that. So there we go, inside that house, just down there by the side of the river. Look around that. What did you think of it? I guess the house prices in the Calder Valley are crazy. House prices around here are so much. It's just with this one, you're taking on that risk, aren't you? You're taking on the risk of hoping that the flood defences have worked, but also right by the river. So anytime it rains, anytime the water starts coming up, you are going to be absolutely bricking it. Are you alright? Ah, ferret, yeah, turn it, close it up. <laughs> Don't know if you heard that, but she went, oh, it's you, the wandering ferret. <laughs> I said, turn it, close enough, I'll take it, wandering ferret. So yeah, I saw this poster the other day that said, we're going to be testing the flood sirens in Todmorden, Hebden Bridge and Mythamroyd. And I thought how appropriate, whilst making this video, that I'd be able to show you and let you hear what those sirens sounds like. The sirens that were the air raid sirens back during the war and you can imagine that what they were used for then was to say danger danger is coming quickly get to safety and it's used for the exact same reason now when this water here when the water starts rising up these sirens go off the air raid sirens and say danger is coming quickly get to safety it's gonna be really interesting and quite haunting to hear them going off i imagine so if it goes accordingly to plan the sirens will be going off any second now Thankfully today, the water is really low, but you can just imagine how terrifying that sound will be when this river is about to burst the banks and that comes through and you already know what can happen in the town. Oh, it's really scary. And as I said, imagine back in the day when that was going off for the war. Uh, June 2012. We were, I was travelling with a colleague um, and the weather was beautiful all the way up and it wasn't until we got to the top of Blackstone Edge when suddenly the rain hit and it hit quite hard and as we were driving down Crag Vale it was, uh, it was unbelievable. Um, the, the, the road was like a river, there was boulders coming off the side of the road, it was almost like a, a film set and you're having to dodge through these roads and we got down to the uh, the, the old bridge in my and that the, the water was to within inches of the, of, of the top of the bridge and then got to Callis then it was for about three or four foot of water it was ridiculous and there was a guy wading through um, Paul had just 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 been lost his house and it was uh, 
and he said, you know, you've got no chance. So I, I turned the car around and, and, and went back to um, towards Hebden to see if I could just go and stay at a friend's house. And the same place that I'd managed to drive through suddenly was a, a foot deeper than, than it had been sort of 15 minutes ago when I'd driven out and drove the car into it and uh, uh, the water went over the bonnet and engine cut out and that's it, I had to abandon it in the middle of the road. Got out of the car, didn't realise how ferocious the water was and again it was rising and rising so where it was probably waist deep 15, 20 minutes early was now suddenly chest high and you know the water and the houses and cannons, it was halfway up the windows, it was, it was so high the, the water and it was I suddenly realised I was being an absolute idiot. The car, so um, didn't really think too much about the car until the following morning. I uh, I woke up at a friend's house and he said, oh, we'll go and we'll go and move your car. And then as we're driving to the car, he gets a text message saying, your car's on the news. Somebody's just seen it on, on, on BBC. And uh, my car was absolutely covered in mud. And, and as, we, as we approached the car, it just, it was just abandoned in this big river of mud and there uh, and we sort of got out and looked and I tried to start it up and nothing happened and literally as I'm as, as I'm deciding right I'm going to have to get out and push this car I noticed the BBC van starting, starting to approach and as I'm pushing it the BBC reporter came and uh, called at me for an interview within within an hour I'm on national news within three hours I've got friends in Australia and places like that that have seen it on BBC <laughs> World Service that have just seen me uh, uh, yeah, trying to tell my little story uh, so yeah it was quite an eventful day yeah so here's a pub the shoulder of mutton and this here again another real bad victim of the floods when you compare it just to that footage from 2015 just crazy it's the stark difference the church there as well that was all underwater So here I am on the moorlands surrounding the Calder Valley and this is what a lot of the areas above the Calder Valley looks like just vast bleak large landscapes that look a lot like this and another thing that factors into the flooding grouse shooting is a big thing around here and a lot of land is privately owned and used for grouse shooting or is let out by Yorkshire Water for grouse shooting look at this This is heather, so yeah, at times this whole landscape is covered in heather. But yeah, what people who are grouse shooting and who own the land is they burn all of the heather. They strip this landscape back, which increases game bird numbers to make grouse shooting easier. Now what that also does is it removes the natural sponge on this landscape, which soaks up all of the rainwater that's falling and when that's not there that water just runs straight down yeah it just decimates that blanket bog and just sends it gushing down now the crazy thing about this is and the strange cycle that occurs is that people who own the land where grouse shooting um, takes place they can claim subsidies from the government under farming laws now the land's not being used for farming it just looks like it's being used for farming so public money is being spent towards this land where the point of the land is grouse shooting they burn all of the heather strip it of that natural absorber the water then runs down into the valley ruining the lives the homes the businesses of people hard-working people it's such a horrible thought isn't it that that our money the money of the people whose lives are getting destroyed is being spent to burn the stuff on the landscape which adds to the flooding which contributes to the flooding awful heptro co started as an idea in the pub in 2015 like in december and then you know come boxing day there was a massive flood in hebden bridge and this is just when we were starting we were just getting going and then there was this massive event that kind of made a real mess of town it was depressing all the fridges and stuff out of the shops and you know people's houses and it, it was really awful and i remember you know that particular day but me and brant went into town and we were like helping clear up like pulling stuff out of shops we went we went into into drink the bar 
and you know we were like ripping stuff out there that was destroyed we sort of wanted our drinking holes to come back you know so drink was like the main target and then I went like mucking out silt from outside Oldgate I thought that's definitely got to help the pub because yeah, that's yeah. the place that I want to go back to so you know that was all around when we got going and then as time moved on and we got launched and we got our first unit we actually got a grant because we were in a flood area and there was like support for businesses and we we got a grant for our first shelving no so way. that shelving that's up there oh, wow. with the red boxes on uh was bought for us no way yeah oh that's so cool you know so we, we, we're kind of part of the emerging calderdale that kind yeah of rose up again yeah out, out of the flood I know, get, it was a real feeling of want to get things going again. Yeah. So I went to Todmorden as well, where the bustling second-hand market was on, and it's hard to imagine the town not being full of life, but I headed into the tourist information where the lady showed me a map which shows all the areas in Todmorden which are in the flood zone, and it just looks like a massive river there, doesn't it? And also, across the walls, there was so much information. So there is so much stuff out there when you look for it about the floods and really reminding you of how close you are to them all. But yeah, I think, you know, mainly there's that kind of positivity, isn't there? Yeah. Like in the co-op in Mytheride, behind the counter, there's a picture of this, there's some like mug, like a photograph of it. It's been pulled out of the mud and it's all about, you know, like, you know, good people come when bad things happen. Yeah. And then you, that builds a sort of sense of community. Oh, yeah. yeah. So this here was the field, was our school football field school football rugby field the school's just up there across the road over there and down here was our field now i kid you not back when i was at school even when it hadn't been raining even when there was no flooding going on in the town this place was always flooded in my memory so yeah what happens here is when all the rivers join together the canals that I've shown you earlier in the video, all the water flowing down from the hills. When they all come together, they come pounding down the valley and they come to here and this acts as like a natural floodplain. This just turns into a lake. All of this is completely underwater. And because you've got the canal just up there as well. So the canal there, the river there, it's just one big lake, this. It's absolutely mad. They've done something here as well. They've created like a natural rewilding spot and I think they've moved the river inwards already. So when it does start, yeah, look at this. So I think what they've done here is they've dug out some riverbeds, some pools there. There's another big one there, another one right over there. Yeah, so I guess what's happening with this is because of how they've designed it, when the water's getting really high, before it's at the flooding level, but when it's getting really high, it'll naturally flow into this spot here and fill up them pools, fill up them empty riverbeds and just go around there, just taking a massive, massive chunk away from the force of the river before it gets to that level where it floods. So that's a really interesting area there. And there's the canal. Yeah, it's crazy. The positioning of all this stuff that just makes it so susceptible to really bad flooding. So yeah, it's such an aesthetically nice looking town. And right now it's a, I mean, I've lived here pretty much all my life and I've never known it as busy or as prosperous as it is at the moment. There's so many shops, it's really booming at the moment. But it's funny because it comes in cycles and like, it, when I say it can wash away your home, your job, your life, it really does that. And businesses start up, then they get flooded, then they can't get insurance again, so then they disappear, then a new one comes along, and it just happens again. And I've seen it happen like four or five times, and it is really scary. But as I say, like now, it's doing really well. There's loads of businesses open, some that I don't even recognize, because they're so new. But yeah, the last flood was in 2020, but the worst one, the worst one was 2015 on Boxing Day. That's when all this footage is from. I'm not sure you can read that, but it says, after the flooding of a lost summer, the true kindness of strangers. I remember there was like a, a bunch of bikers came, yeah. like patrolling the streets, you know, in case there was looting gonna go on <laughs> and just making people feel safe. I think there was a bunch of Sikhs that came from Bradford uh, who brought loads of food to give people nice food, you know. Lots of stories of uh, 
of resilience. Yeah. Because that's what it's about, isn't it? Yeah. On that Boxing Day flood in 2015, nearly 3,000 homes and 4,500 businesses were flooded along the Calder Valley. But if you're from here, or even if you've just visited here, you'll know that when it's beautiful around here, there is nowhere else like it on earth. So I just want to say a massive shout out to all the businesses, to Max at To The Max Fitness, to Rory at Fresh Grills for sharing his story, to Ed and all the team up at Heb Troco. I'm going to link all these businesses below if you want to check them out. Especially a big thanks to Raphael, who is a motion graphics designer based in the Calder Valley. And the majority of the footage from the 2015 floods I've used was his, and he kindly let me use it for this video. So if you want to check out his website as well, I'll link it below. There's also this amazing charity called Slow The Flow, who are educators in natural flood management and they're doing amazing stuff so check out them as well if you want to know how you can maybe get involved do some volunteering and finding out how small changes can have a big impact on the valley and flood prevention and I was so buzzing that on the last day of filming for this video this is what the Calder Valley looked like the sky was blue the town was full of people it was just gorgeous and I'm just left thinking of all those people that I spoke to all those business owners and people who lost the lives and the houses with those messages of positivity and resilience and mainly community community coming together to overcome bad things like this and it's just incredible looking into the valley there to know that fighting spirit exists and that is just a beautiful thing.